My hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. I dare not trust the sweetest rank, but wholly lean on Jesus' name. On Christ the solid rock I stand, all other ground is sinking sand. All other ground is sinking sand. When darkness veils his lovely face, I rest on his unchanging grace. In every high and stormy gale, my anchor holds within the veil. On Christ the solid rock I stand, all other ground is sinking sand. All other ground is sinking sand. His oath is covenant, and his blood support me in the whelming flood. When all around my soul gives way, he then is all my hope and stay. Solid rock I stand, all other ground is sinking sand. All other ground is sinking sand. When he shall come with trumpet sound, oh, may I then in him be found, dressed in his righteousness alone, faultless to stand before the throne. On Christ the solid rock I stand, all other ground is sinking sand. All other ground is sinking sand. Amen. Amen. All right. Open up your red hymn books to 268. 268. Because we have a solid rock, our foundation is firm and secure. That's right. Amen. Amen. 268 in your red hymn books. 268 in your red hymn books. How firm a foundation. These are very, very good words, actually. I like this song. What we're going to do is that because, uh, for time's sake, we're going to skip verse 3. Verse 3, we'll skip. Here we go. How firm a foundation, ye saints of the Lord, is laid for your faith in his excellent work. What more can he say than to you he has said, to you who for refuge to Jesus have fled? Fear not, I am with thee, O be Please stand with your red hymn books. 
514, please. 514. 514 in your red hymn books. 514 in your red hymn books. Thank God. Marching to Zion. We're getting closer to that That's right. heavenly Zion, that city of God. Hopefully next part. 514. <laughs> 514 in your red hymn books. All right, we're going to skip verse 2 for time's sake. We're going to skip verse 2 for time's sake. We're going to sing 1, 3, and 4. Here we go. Come, Come we that love the Lord and let our joys be known. Join in a song with sweet accord. Join in a song with sweet accord. And thus surround the throne. And thus surround the throne. We're marching to Zion. Beautiful, beautiful Zion. We're marching upward to Zion. The beautiful city of God. The hill Sweets. Before we reach the heavenly fields, before we reach the heavenly fields, or walk the golden streets, or walk the golden streets, when marching to Zion, beautiful, beautiful Zion, we're marching upward to Zion, the beautiful city of God. Then let our songs abound and every tear be dry. We're marching through Emmanuel's round. We're marching through Emmanuel's round to fairer worlds on high. To fairer worlds on high. We're marching to Zion, beautiful, beautiful Zion. We're marching upward to Zion. City of God. Amen. 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 Praise God for Zion. Amen. All right, let's start off with a word of prayer. If Brother Caleb can start off the service with a word of prayer, please. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for this wonderful morning. Lord, thank you for each and every person who was able to join us today. Lord. And if, every, if anyone else is going to join us today, please, we pray that you bless their uh, travels, help them carry you safely. Lord. Please bless the rest of the singing and the rest of the teaching and the teaching that we have for the rest of the day. Keep our ears open and please bless the pastor. Amen. 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 You may be seated. You may be seated. All right. Please take out your white hymnal. Please take out your white hymnal. Hey, out your white hymnal. I love singing praises that glorifies our King. That's right. Hey. Seventy in your white hymnal, please. Seventy in your white hymnal, please. Good number. Yes, a good number. Amen. Age hey, seventy in your white hymnal. One day we'll see him. Amen. One day we'll see him. I hope that the rapture will sound right now. Amen. Amen. Right now. Right now. We can go to heaven right now and be with Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. I want that free trip rapture to hit, and I can see Jesus face to face. Glory. Amen, brother. Amen. All right. Amen. Page 70 in your white hymnal. Here we go. Uh, what we're going to uh, we're going to skip verse two for time's sake. We're going to skip verse two for time's sake. Here we go. Though the way we journey may be often drear. We shall see the King someday. On that blessed morning, clouds will disappear. We shall see the King someday. We shall see the King someday. someday. We will shout and sing someday. Gather round the throne when he shall call his own. We shall see the King shall see the king someday. After strife is over, after set of sun, we shall see the king someday. We shall see the king someday. We will shout and sing someday. Gather round the throne when he shall call his own. We shall see the king someday. all the loved ones who have gone before. 
we shall see the king someday. Sorrow pass forever on the peaceful shore, we shall see the king someday. We shall see the king someday. We will shout and sing someday. Gather round the throne when he shall call his own. We shall see the king someday. Amen. 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 We're going to see him one day. Yes, sir. All right, if Brother Tom can come forward and give the announcements for us, please. Give the announcements for us. Hello, brethren. Good, Good morning. morning. Good morning. Nice to morning. see all of you here today. We have some exciting announcements as usual. Let's see. So this upcoming Friday, we're going to have Bible study at Sister Glory's house, 8 p.m. And upcoming Sunday, we'll also have street preaching at Chevron, same corner, same place. Make sure you, you can park at the Chevron parking lot or you can park in probably the shopping lot parking lot like some of our members do. Um, I also would like to announce our church's summer camp, which runs from July 30th to August 3rd. Um, and I would really encourage you to go. Like I said last week, I think I said also two weeks ago, it's a, it's a really great experience. You get to fellowship with brethren that are like-minded. And it's a pure environment because we don't, we don't have any of the garbage of the world because it we try so hard to get rid of all that because that's supposed to be a place where we can rest, where we can have good fellowship. And um, make sure you give an answer to whether or not you can or cannot go by the end of April. Please. Um, and it's going to be the last Sunday you're going to see pastors April 28th. So please give them an answer at least by then, if, if, if at all possible. It's, uh, it's important that you know, let pastor know so that he can tell, you know, the, our parent or our other church, the bigger church down in L.A. because they have to reserve some, some things for the camp. Um, now our memory verse this past week and the has been Psalms chapter 12. Um, it's been, uh, if you can please turn there, Psalms chapter 12. This week it's going to be, last week I believe it was Psalms uh, 12, 1 to, th 1 to 2. This week it's going to be 3 to 4. And I'm going to read it aloud. And then I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to like, I'm kind of cheating here, but I'm going to recite it for you after I read it, okay? So um, the verse is, the verses are as follows. The Lord shall cut off all flattering lips and the tongue that speaketh proud things. Who have said, with our tongue will we prevail, our lips are our own. Who is Lord over us? So verse 3 is basically saying God's going to cut off all those flattering lips, all those, you know, all those people who are just yapping with their mouths, internet preachers that think they know the true, like, good yeah. doctrine, but they, they really don't, and they lead people to hell by preaching that water baptism saves and things like that. A lot of people like that. So he's going to cut off all those flattering lips, and he's also going to cut off all... All of, all of those tongues that say proud things, that boast themselves up. Um, verse 4 says, Who have said with our tongue will we prevail? Basically, the wicked people will say what they want, and they don't care that the Lord's watching over us, because they're saying, Who is Lord over us? We're going to do what we want. That's good. Yeah. And, well, the Lord's not going to stand for that. He says he's going to cut them off. So we'll see what happens in the future. I'm going to try to do verses 1 to 4. Let me see if I can do it. Um, Come on, bud. Yeah, go for it. Let's see. <laughs> Help, Lord, for the uh, for the godly man ceaseth, for they fail from among the children of men. Let me know if I've said something wrong, by the way, guys. Um, Just go for it. Just go for it. They speak vanity, every one with his neighbor, with flattering lips and with a double heart do they speak. We just read this. Uh, the Lord shall cut off all all flattering lips and the tongue that speaketh proud things. Uh, who have said, who have said, uh, with our tongue will we prevail. Our lips are our own. Who is Lord over us? Okay, so that was four. <laughs> I slightly cheated there because I read it, read it earlier, but it was still hard nonetheless. Um, uh, try to keep up with those verses. They will help you. One of these days, you might have to quote it to somebody who, who knows. Um, now we're going to have a special with Pastor and the other aforementioned people. I'm satisfied with just a cottage below. A little silver and a little gold, but in that city where the ransom will shine, I want a gold one, that silver line. I've got a mansion just over the hilltop in that bright land where 
river grows. And someday yonder, we will never more wander. But walk on streets that are purest gold. Though often tempted, tormented and tested, and like the prophet, my pillow a stone. And though I find here no permanent dwelling, I know he'll give me a mansion my own. I've got a mansion just over the hilltop in that bright land where we'll never grow old. And someday yonder we will never more wander, but walk on streets that are purest gold. Don't think me poor or deserted or lonely. I'm not discouraged. I'm heaven bound. I'm just a pilgrim in search of that city. I want a mansion, a harp and a crown. I've got a mansion just over the hilltop in that bright land where we'll never grow old. And someday yonder, we will never more wander, but walk on streets that are purest gold. Amen. Amen. Okay, so we're going to be taking up the Lord's offering. If Brother Sean can come forward and take up the Lord's offering for us, and then ask God's blessing upon the church service with a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, Lord, we come to you in prayer in the name of Jesus Christ. I want to first ask forgiveness of my sins, Father. I plead the precious blood of my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I pray, Father, that you would uh, put a protective hedge around this room today, Lord yes, God. Lord, any, amen. Any, any evil spirits in this room, Lord, I pray you get them out of here. I pray that amen. you would not have them to hinder the service. I pray Holy that Spirit you would fill, fill each and every yes. saved believer with the Holy Ghost. In this room today, Father God, I pray that the uh, Holy Spirit would have free course. I pray that you would fill Pastor with Holy Ghost unction and boldness, that Help you would Lord. speak through him, Father, and he would give us what you've laid on his heart to give us today, so that it would really prick our hearts, and it would really have us uh, in these last days, Father God, going on, going all out for you, Lord, trying mm -hmm. to lead lost souls to salvation, trying to get closer to you, trying to Master. read more Bible and pray. Amen. And Father, I pray that you would use this offering today, this free will offering, have it to be uh, out of good cheer, not out of necessity. Amen. And I pray that you would use it for your will and uh, your honor and glory. I pray all these things in the name of my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Romans chapter 12, please. Romans chapter 12. Romans chapter 12. All right, let's have the Holy Spirit have free course, right? Amen. As the brother prayed. So let's have the Holy Spirit have free course today. All right. Romans chapter 12. And we're going to look at verse 11. Not slothful in business. Amen. <laughs> Fervent in spirit, serving the Lord. Rejoicing in hope patient in tribulation, continuing instant in prayer, distributing to the necessity of saints, given to hospitality. Bless them which persecute you. Bless and curse not. Rejoice with them that do rejoice, and weep with them that weep. Be of the same mind one toward another. Mind not high things, but condescend to men of low estate. Be not wise in your own conceits. Recompense to no man evil for evil. Provide things honest in the sight of all men. If it be possible, as much as lieth in you, live peaceably with all men. Dearly beloved, avenge not yourselves, but rather give place unto wrath. 
For it is written, Vengeance is mine. I will repay, saith the Lord. Therefore, if thine enemy hunger, feed him. If he thirst, give him drink. For in so doing, thou shalt keep coals of fire on his head. Be not overcome of evil, but overcome evil with good. Let's all bow with a word of prayer. God, my Father, wash away my sins with your precious and most holy blood. I don't know why you would use a broken, empty vessel like me. But thank you so much for still using me, God. I am not worth it. Dear Lord God, I pray that you'll please fill within me the power of your Holy Spirit. Wash away my sins with your blood so that your preaching can take full course today. Dear Lord God, take control over against every spirit and heart in this room so that you can reign supreme and not flesh and not man. I pray that today's preaching will prick, convict, change people's lives. I pray that you'll have hearts soften and ears open. And Lord, may you get full glory out today. Dear Lord God, may there not be any burden or hindrance to all hearts and minds here as believers as we try to edify one another. To you be the honor, glory, majesty, and praise. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 All right. So today I'm pretty worn out, but I believe that with this worn out spirit, perhaps the Lord, uh, more of my heart can show in this message today for people. So in Romans chapter 12, we see right here that concerning people who treat us in evil, how we are supposed to treat them in return. Unfortunately, we live in a day and age where people, they are very arrogant, they are proud, they are stubborn, and because they have so much pride, the number one thing is pride. See, that's the problem with people. The number one thing is pride. And when they have pride, what they want to do is that they want themselves to look like the king and they, they want to stomp down every other person out there. Now, do I believe in rebuking false prophets? Amen, amen. I, I wouldn't take that back. I will still rebuke false prophets. I'll call them out and do it without compromising. But there is a difference with rebuking a false prophet, and there is a difference with looking like a circus with people arguing back and forth. Have you ever done that in visitation or street preaching? You ever, you know, argue back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. I mean, isn't your job to get the soul saved? But in the end, what, you're, what are you doing? You're just ending up with an unnecessary debate where the soul is going to reject anyway and not get saved. You see this circus of the Internet where people, they try to hurl videos at each other, and then you see a circus all over, and there are modern version Bible, Bible people who see that, and they say, oh, look at those KJV-only Baptists. Look how arrogant, prideful they are. All they do is pick fights with each other. You know, they're not like our kind of churches. We modern Bible churches. We're so loving, we share. We don't act prideful and arrogant like all those other people. You see that? That's a horrible test testimony of Bible believing Christians because they have that's not that's not bravery see that's not rebuking false prophets that's pride that's absolute pride absolute pride I will never I will never compromise no matter what and I will not hesitate to rebuke false prophets but I refuse to make myself look like a circus of animals tearing at each other when there are so many souls dying and going to hell and there are people in this church who need help and ministering unto and I can't waste my time on some person out there making myself look better than him or her when I have people out there who are hungry, who need to be fed, who need to be given the gospel of Jesus Christ and need to get saved. You know, you, you know, we get some of these people, you know, you ever saw this video link, you know, about you? You know, please make a video against that. You saw my other two videos, right, concerning the Internet. What did Nehemiah said, you know, when the enemy says, why don't you come down to the place of oh no? When it says oh no, that means oh no, you shouldn't go there. See, you know why? Because Nehemiah has a wall to build. I've got a wall to build, and I refuse to stoop myself with Sambalip Gisham, Tobias, I'm not going to go down and deal with three people when I got hundreds of people, thousands of people yeah. online, people in this room to take care of, and then people in this local community where I have to pass out tracts, give the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. Yeah. See, I refuse to make myself look like a funny farm. I refuse to make myself look that. I got a job to treat, and I got a job to take care of souls out there, souls out there. And I will never compromise on that. So what do you do with enemies, right? Don't you get all mad and upset 
when people mistreat you and you know that they're wrong and you feel like that you can stomp them on something? You know, don't you feel like that? What do you do with those enemies? Well, you know, what does the Bible say right here? Look at verse 14. Bless them which what? Persecute you. No way! Bless and what? Curse not. You Don't move that in any dispensation now. You can't do that. <laughs> this is Paul speaking to you Christians right there. And then what does verse 17 say? Recommends to no man what? Evil for evil. See that? Look at verse 19. How should you treat the enemies? Dearly beloved, avenge not yourselves. See, that's the key. You know what you do when you try to keep arguing, debating, and then you keep fighting back and forth and then hurling videos at each other? You know what that is? That's flesh. That's pride. That's not doing it, oh, I'm doing it to rebuke false prophets. No, that's pride. Because what you want to do is make yourself look good and make other people look bad. That's what Amen. you want to do. Amen. So then, you know, with that kind of pride, you're trying to feed your flesh where you can seek vengeance. And you see these people, it's a circus. Have you ever seen the internet, how much of a circus it is? If you build a ministry on the internet, let me tell you something. You're not right with God, amen. An internet should be just a side duty. One of the things that we do to reach people out there. But that is the, not the main goal of our ministry. Our main goal is what? Our main goal is to minister and do our work as a local church. That's what we're supposed to do. You know, we did fine without the internet. And you know, we did fine with the internet. My job is to whatever God gives to me, I believe in using the best of my ability. And when you depend upon the internet, see, that's why, what will those internet teachers do? That's why they'll compromise. They'll look at certain people's comments. They'll look at other people, which videos they watch. And by doing that, that's why they'll speak in a certain way, teach in a certain way, do in a certain way. That way they can build up more views and then more subscribers and all that. And then they build their church on the internet. You know what? All it takes is for the devil to demon possess some YouTube, the guy who's in charge of YouTube out there, to just drop the whole channel. Then what happened to your ministry? Good for you. Praise the Lord. What happened to you? You know, there are some people who can't build a church and they didn't build a church until they had an internet. And when they had the internet, oh boy, then they started building people after that. That's very pitiful if you rely on that. You rely on the internet. No, look, no, I rely on God Almighty. I rely on God the Holy Amen. Spirit. And I've done that for many years. Look, I, how long have we been on the internet? I already know the statistics, the secular methods, and all that kind of stuff to build up people. But you know what? The Lord taught me over and over again that it doesn't matter what kind of wisdom you use, you're not depending upon me. And if I use a similar video with another video that I thought would be really good, the Lord teaches me a lesson and it doesn't work. See? You know, uh, you internet people who are trying to pick off out of rebuking somebody, and you know, you guys got so few views that until you picked up somebody, then you're like, oh, now I'm getting popular, so I'm gonna keep picking on that guy. You know, you should see some of the YouTube channels out there. You know when they picked on your pastor right here? And then you saw the videos, they just have like a couple hundred or something like that. And then when they picked on this ministry here, what, I'm just a little guy. I'm just a little guy. And then when they pick on this little guy, they start to get, what, so many views after that? And then they like that, so then they'll keep doing that. You know, especially if you're a local pastor doing that, you are very pitiful. I feel bad for you. Amen. Amen. Oh my goodness, you stoop so low to do that, just to pick on this little guy right here? What in the world? Aren't you embarrassed? Aren't you ashamed of yourself? You're just giving me more publicity to the small guy anyway. And you make yourself look bad by stooping low just to pick on this what? Little guy? Oh, he's too young. Oh, you know, ministry too small. Oh, who does he think he is? Oh, who does he think he is? All that. Why do you say that then if you don't think that our ministry is that much of a big deal? Are you afraid of us? Are you afraid of us? Is that the reason why you do that? See, me, I don't care. The Lord will take care of me. Again, I don't care about rebuking false prophets. I believe in doing that. I posted videos on that. But man, I don't depend on those things. I depend on what God wants me to do. He wants me to preach the whole counsel of God. You know what the whole counsel of God is? The whole counsel of God is to give all of what God teaches in his Bible, not to just pick on other people, not to seek vengeance. See? 
And that's the problem, is that those people, they depend on those things. You are so fleshy. You are so pitiful. Your God is called YouTube. Your God is called Google. Your God is called the Internet. Your God is called Facebook. Your God is called Twitter. And you depend on the secular methods of the people's comments and the people's views to build up your ministry. You know what? I, you are so pitiful. I feel so sorry for you. I can see that God is not in that when you do it that way. You know, we do fine by ourselves. You know, we were small for many years too, haven't we? And you know what? I didn't care about that. Weren't we, remember when we had no internet and we still built up a ministry and we still did fine? Look, we'll do fine with the internet. We'll do fine without the internet because God's the one who gives us the internet or who doesn't give us the internet. And I depend upon him to give me the power, for him to give me the people, for him to give me the fruits, for him to build up this ministry. And if he doesn't want it, that's his will and not mine. And I'll trust in him. And that's the thing about... You have to depend on God Almighty. But you see people who seek vengeance at verse 19, they don't trust in God, do they? They trust in their flesh. They feel like they themselves have to take action. That's why they'll hurl videos at each other. And that's the reason why they'll just keep arguing with the person that they're witnessing to. That's the reason why they feel like they have to win a fight and stuff like that. Vengeance, vengeance. See, you don't depend upon God to take care of the person. You depend upon yourself. Pastor, what are you going to do with these people who criticize you? I don't depend upon my flesh for me to figure out what to do to take care of that problem. I, I depend upon God to take care of them. Amen. And you know what? I posted a video before on this. Some of you who are there who talk, uh, who saw my lesson about enemies, remember about blessing enemies and stuff like that? If some of you were there that time at Bible study... When I drew, I gave a warning to my enemies out there. I said, you know, I noticed that when the, Lord, when the Lord's ministry is attacked by enemies, I've seen those enemies get hurt. And I'm not going to mention their names or embarrass them, but I know of two people where it did happen. And you know what? I had no idea. The Lord does it where you don't know because he wants you to see where you depend upon him, not pleasing your flesh. Amen, good, amen and amen. I didn't amen. know until a year later. And I found out that the timing of God's judgment was exactly matched up with when they criticized us. If, you have, if you're saved, are you saved? Amen. Do you have the Holy Spirit in you? Amen. If you do, then you should be afraid. You should be afraid if you start attacking and criticizing God's ministry. You should definitely be afraid. Because right here it says at verse 19, Dearly beloved, avenge not yourselves, but rather give place unto wrath. For it is written, vengeance is mine, I will repay, saith the Lord. If I cast judgment, if I do the punishment on my enemy, do you think that will be worse than what God does? You should be afraid when God does that. Let's keep reading right here. Therefore, if thine enemy hunger, feed him. If he thirsts, give him drink. For in so doing, thou shalt heap coals of fire on his head. Be not overcome of evil, but overcome evil with good. Here's something that's worse. You know what's worse? Is that if a Bible-believing ministry and a Bible believer is being attacked by enemies, and what's worse is that if that Bible believer does not return evil on you, and if that Bible believer does good to you instead, you know what that is? That's building up God's wrath even more because he sees the enemy keep attacking this Bible believer, and this Bible believer did not recompense evil for evil. Don't you think that's going to make the father up in heaven seeing his child getting, what, beaten up and hit by other people. Don't you think that's going to enrage the father even more? Amen, that's right. I'd be scared if I were you. See that? That's why I don't worry. You know why? God will take care of them. God will take care of them. You know why? Because God's been too good to me. God's been too good to me with souls getting saved, people who've grown in grace, people who've called, people who've emailed. God's been good with our internet, Bible-believing pastors around the world, not just states, around the world, around the world, who are all rooting for us, encouraging us, saying that we're picking up a mantle that uh, other Bible-believing churches have not done. You know what? Because of that, 
God's been too good to me. I don't worry. You know, in this expensive area, the Lord's been merciful and gracious to keep paying my bills, Amen, to brother. give me food on the table. Amen. People in this church who still want to be fed, people in this church who love the pastor and help him out when he didn't ask for it. You know what? God's been too good to me. Let the enemies rot and rave and attack this pastor and this ministry. God's been too good to me that I don't have to worry about them. And you know what? God's wrath and rage is building up even higher for them. So I have no concern or worry about them. And if you guys are the ones out there who are attacking, who are the enemy, I'd be afraid if I were you. I'd be afraid if I were you. So notice right here, recompense good. So what do we do with the enemy? We recompense good unto them. So you know what? What we should do as a church? There's power in prayer, amen? amen. There's power in prayer. So if the enemy starts attacking, you know what you should do? Pray for the enemy. And when prayer kicks in, God's going to start moving. So what do we do? Pray that God blesses the enemy's religious ministry. No, don't be partaker of his evil deeds. Amen, Second John. No, we're not going to bid God's blessing on their religious wickedness. See, religious wise. But what we're going to pray for them personally is this. So notice right here, we overcome evil with good, right? In verse 14, we bless them, right? What do you think will be their good? What do you think will be a blessing to those kind of enemies right now who are attacking you? Right now, the blessing is not that they get rich in their ministry because then they'll get a greater curse, right, upon themselves, and they'll get greater deception. The blessing and the goodness is, Lord, I pray that you will please open that blinded eye before it gets worse for that person. What did Stephen say when his enemy stoned him to death? What did Jesus say when he was crucified? Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. You know why? He wants them to get saved. He wants them to repent. That's how we should treat our enemies. You know, you know what I want? I want those enemies. I don't want those enemies to get hurt and damaged. I want them to get saved. I want them to repent. I want them to be King James only Bible believing. I want them to believe in dispensational Amen. truth. I want my enemies to become like that. So let's lift them up to God and pray to them and say, Lord, I pray we surrender that person to you. And I pray that you will please make that person repent. Make that person get saved. Amen. Amen. Let's do that. Amen. And look at Romans 2. Romans 2. You know what happens when you do that now? Didn't you know when you show more goodness, that's done to get them to repentance? That's what it means to overcome evil with good. When we show them more goodness, the goal is to get them to repent. See? That's the ultimate goal. Not that they thrive in their wickedness and they get away with it, but that they would repent. Look at Romans chapter 2. Romans chapter 2. And verse 4, Or despisest thou the riches of his goodness, and forbearance and long suffering? Has not God done that with many wicked people today already? He put up with it long enough already. But look at this verse right here. Not knowing that what? The goodness of God leadeth thee to what? Repent. That's the only reason God would show goodness to them. See? Or bless them. The goal is to get them to repent. You see that? That's the thing. And when he shows more goodness, remember, like Romans 12 said, when you show more goodness, what happens? More judgment stores up. Look at the very next book, uh, the very next verse. What does it say? But after thy what? Hardness and impenitent heart. That's why I would be afraid if I were you, if you're the enemy of the Lord. Impenitent heart, what happens? Treasurest up unto thyself wrath against the day of wrath and revelation of the righteous judgment of God. Wow. Wow, right? Some of those wicked, so-called, they have the audacity to call themselves Christian, let alone Bible believers. Shame on you if you call yourself that. Don't give us a bad name. Because I know the majority of Bible-believing pastors, majority of Bible-believing pastors in the states and around the world who refuse to be join the charade, the circus of so-called Bible believers on the internet. I know that. So that we refuse to be a part of you. 
All right, you can try to pretend you're one of us. You can pretend that you believe the King James Bible is perfect. You can pretend you're a Bible believer, but guess what? You know, you can, par that's like a parrot parading about himself, but people won't recognize it. Bible believing pastors won't recognize you, especially if your Bible believing group who teaches all the doctrines like you are less than 20 different local churches around the world. Ooh, that should be very embarrassing. And those are the people who definitely depend upon the internet to build up other churches after that and more people, right? Look, without the internet, we Bible-believing pastors have been here for decades, for decades. And we've been here all around the world. I mean, we re our brother was reading missionary, right? A missionary? I mean, that's just one of our missionaries. We got many missionaries around the world. I mean, see that? So we refuse to be a part of you, all right? You can parrot and embarrass yourself by calling yourself a Bible believer. We know better. We're, we're not a part of you. Amen. We're definitely not a part of you. And you know what? As you keep parroting that you're the real Bible believer. Oh, you should look at us. And then you start to criticize real, genuine Bible believers. And then you know what we do? What do we do? We just leave it be, right? We leave them to the Lord, right? Then you know what happens? Verse 5 treasurest up unto thyself wrath. Boom. You wicked so-called, so-called Bible believers better watch out because as soon as you finish your own church service and then you guys go home and you finish your preaching and you do your silly video on YouTube after that, watch out right after that and drive carefully when you go home. And be careful when you go inside your house and make sure that you sleep very tight and you get peace because the bed bugs will really bite. Enjoy it while you have the chance, because if you're saved and you have the Holy Spirit and you know what you did, see the Holy Spirit, if you are saved and you have the Holy Spirit, there's something in that Holy Spirit that's showing you and kicking you and you have some kind of uncomfortable tension about that. See, I know the, the Lord will keep pricking your heart, but you know what you're like? You're like, look at Acts, look at the book of Acts. Look at the book. You don't believe me? Yeah, it does. It does. No matter how demon-possessed they are, I know for a fact the Lord's making them uncomfortable. He's convicting them right now. He's convicting you right now. Look at the book of Acts, chapter 8. If you don't believe me, look at Acts 8. You know who's worse? Have you ever met a wicked Christian who tortured, who tortured Bible believers? Literally, I mean physically tortured. No, right? I don't think I ever met a person like that or a so-called Christian who would do that. There was one person who thought that he was doing the work of the Lord and he was torturing people. You talk about this guy was hopeless. He would never get saved, never get saved. And I mean, period, never get saved because he was so zealous in his false Judaism religion. There was no way he was going to budge. But look at Acts chapter 9, Acts chapter 9 and verse 1. And Saul, yet breathing out threatenings and slaughter against the disciples of the Lord, went unto the high priest and desired of him letters to Damascus to the synagogues, that if he found any of this way, whether they were men or women, he might bring them bound unto Jerusalem. So look at that. You would think like a guy like that is so demon possessed he doesn't get conviction at all. But look at verse three. And as he journeyed, he came near Damascus and suddenly there shined round about him a light from heaven. And he fell to the earth and heard a voice saying unto him, Saul, Saul, why persecutest thou me? And he said, Who art thou, Lord? And the Lord said, I am Jesus whom thou hurt persecutest. What did this next line say? It is hard for thee to kick against the pricks. The Lord was dealing with him in his conscience all that time. Despite of his ramblings, his railing, he can put up that poker face as he tortured that Bible-believing Christian and put that sarcasm on and that rebellious attitude and that prideful, arrogant spirit and looks so demon-possessed that he has no heart, he can put that facade. But God was convicting him and kicking him with conviction. And I know people out there who are attacking Bible believers. I know some of you Bible believers are being attacked as well. That's why, here's another thing. If there's some evil that fell upon your friends and family members, you gotta realize this. Maybe that's God dealing with their hearts. You ever thought about that? That's God convicting them, see? 
That's God's trying to make them repent and see, hey, stop making fun of that brother and sister. Start, stop criticizing them. All they wanted to, wanted to do is get you saved. All they wanted to do was to show you Bible-believing truth, and yet you criticize, you mock, you spat. You know, I seem to remember that when my son was walking on the hill of Calvary, when they beat his face and plucked off his beard, and they spat on him, and they said that he was not of God. If you are one of, if you are... If you have the power, you know, save yourself from the cross, you know. The father is saying, you know, I'm recollecting that when you do that with my other sons right here. You think I'm going to stand for that? See, the Lord's dealing with them. So, you know what? I don't know what kind of hard times you're going through. And let me add this too. It can be your greatest enemy. Listen now, you're not going to believe this. Your greatest enemy can be fellow Bible-believing, dispensational, King James-only Christians. Amen. Amen. You say, oh, I don't think so. Oh, stay here long enough. All right, stick around. You'll see. You'll see some brother and sister, what, robbing some money? Some brother and sister backbiting and gossiping about you? Some brother and sister trying to cause a church split and then go among the weaker members and then drive out and then they'll start another church somewhere down the street or some other things. You know, they'll try to insert some wrong doctrine. Oh yeah, the pastor taught something interesting here, but, and then you insert your little doctrine sneakily like a snake, the serpent that you are. Stick around, you'll find out. Stick around, you'll find out. I've seen that. I've seen that for years. And you know what? Don't worry about that, all right? Don't worry about if pastor, if the pastor and fellow Bible-believing Christians think the person is a good person. Don't worry, God is dealing with that person's heart. Don't worry, God is taking care of that person. And before one of you think you have the audacity to call yourself Bible believer, and then you get this Elijah syndrome, and you have this demon-possessed Saul syndrome, Saul was demon-possessed, that guy, that man, what did he do? Oh, David is, David wants to kill me. Oh, da you know, all of you are for my side. Oh, I'm by myself and I'm trying to do what is right. And wasn't he the one persecuting David? Amen. And you see these sorry, good for nothings out there who put this Elijah syndrome so that they can build up the sympathy of the people. Oh, I'm all alone. Oh, nobody cares. And they always look depressed when they teach or yeah. preach. And they look like they lost the joy of the Lord. And then they start to persecute David out there. And while they're persecuting David, they pretend the persecution's on them. You know what that is? You're demon possessed. Yep. That's good. Oh, oh, right there. Look at Saul if you don't believe me. Look at Saul. Do you know what happened to Saul? Do you think he got the pity party that he deserved? No, you saw what happened to him. God judged him severely, didn't he? I don't worry. God will judge them severely. You shouldn't worry. God will judge them severely. That's why, see, you should not feel, seek vengeance. You should seek their salvation and repentance. You see that? Amen. How many of us have spat on the face of the Lord Jesus Christ, plucked off his beard, how many of us have crucified him on the cross with our sins? How many of us have done that? And yet Jesus Christ, rather than seeking vengeance, he shed grace upon this place. He shed grace upon your heart and he said what? Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. Lord God, please give Brother Emilio a chance where he can receive Jesus Christ for his salvation. Amen. Lord God, I know that Rob that he's messing up in sin over there and out there, and God knows what. But Lord God, forgive him and give him a chance to get saved so that he can become a Bible believer. Amen. You remember Sean, Lord? I know Sean. Took your name in vain, Lord. And God, I know that Sean, he'll probably end up for good for nothing. But God, Father, forgive him, for he knows Thank not what he'd Lord. do. Give him a chance to get Thank saved. You, give him a Amen. chance to teach and preach on this pulpit. Amen. Give him a chance where he can lead a hundred souls to salvation. Amen. You know Tom, Lord. I know Tom, he's just blinded to Catholicism. He was the one criticizing Christians. He was the one that's saying, come back to that abominable whore, Holy Mother Church. I know Tom, but... Lord God, Father, forgive him, for he knows not what he do. Will you get him saved? Will you get him to repent? And God, thank God, he saved your soul. So he shed goodness upon you. So that you can repent and come to the house of God. And give him the glory that he deserves. Father, forgive that so-and-so out there who's criticizing me, Lord. Father, forgive that person. Father, show goodness to that person. Not to spoil him or make him thrive on his wickedness but to lead him to repentance, please. Amen. Amen. There's no hope. You can't do that. 
didn't work with Paul, the apostle, who became the greatest Christian who ever lived and wrote nearly more, most of the books in your New Testament. God can change a wicked man like him. God can change any man out there. I will never take back rebuking errors and false doctrine because did not Jesus do that one chapter long at Matthew chapter 23? He said harsher things than I did. But yet Jesus knew that there's a difference with rebuking and there's a difference where a person needs to get saved and to repent. That's why what did he say about those Sadducees, Pharisees, and Jews? Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. What did Stephen do? Did you read Acts 7? What did Stephen do? He ripped their hides. He rebuked them hard, didn't he? Ye stiff-necked, uncircumcised, hardened ears. Ye always do resist the Holy Ghost, he says. You're the ones who killed as your father, so did he. You're the ones who killed the Christians and all that. Oh my goodness. And what did he say after he was stoned to death? Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. Accuse me for having no love. I don't care what you say. I will, I will rebuke because the Bible told me to rebuke. But don't you dare say that I have no love. Because I want them to get saved and to repent. I will never take that back for all the world. Let's pray for our enemies. Let's, aren't we riled up today to pray for our enemies? Yeah. Let's surrender them to God. Surrender them to the sovereign, almighty hand of God and let God handle them. And as those fingers start closing even more and more, maybe he can crush and break their hearts before God crush and breaks their lives. So let's pray. Let's surrender them. Let's name all those enemies out there. And yeah, you better be scared of us online. We're going to start now. We're going to search up your names. And we're going to pray and surrender you to the Lord Jesus Christ. And have God deal with your heart. That's what we're going to do. Amen and amen. amen. Let's do that. Amen. Because we want them to get saved. We want them to repent. Yes. Amen. Let's do that today. Amen. And let the enemies mock, you know. Oh, they're going to pray. I don't see anything happening yet. Uh -huh. let, it, let it continue for 20 years. And let's assume. I highly doubt it, but let's assume God didn't do anything. Let them keep mocking. You know who gets the last laugh? Wasn't God patient for 2,000 years? That's right. Amen. 2,000 years. With mankind mocking him and saying, Where's the promise of his coming? Right? Second Peter 3. Where is it? Where is it? Where is it? I don't see it anywhere. Rapture's not going to happen. Oh, it's not going to happen. What well, in the world? Let them mock. Let them mock. See? You know why? Because who gets the last laugh? And when that judgment hammer comes down, the amount of times that God has forborne you, long-suffering, especially his children doing that, the more what? The greater damnation you burn in hell. And you should be scared. And if you're saved, you're lucky. But that fire is going to burn even higher at the judgment seat of Christ. And God called hell the wrath of God. Do you know what he called the judgment seat of Christ? Terror. You know what's scary? I mean, I remember Sister Glory. She was so scared after that. She's like, well, what's that terror? And I was like, I don't know. And then she said, that's scary. How come I can't even know? That's even more scary. <laughs> that's, right. that's right. Yeah. Like, remember my brother? I don't know if some of you were there. But my brother, he said one time that the scariest thing he ever heard from his father was not that his dad said, I'm going to beat you when I get home or stuff like that. But rather that when he talked to his dad on the phone, and he can tell that his dad was upset, he just simply said calmly. My dad said simply calmly to my brother, we'll see when I get there. <laughs> That's, my brother said that was the scariest thing he ever experienced in his life. So you know what? That terror of the Lord, you better be scared. You better be afraid. Don't you see why you shouldn't be be ill towards your enemies? Don't you want them to repent, get saved? Like you? <laughs> Don't you want them to believe in dispensational truth like you? Don't you want them to preach about the King James Bible like you? Don't you want them to start encouraging and helping brothers like you? Don't you want them see, to unite Bible believers together like you? Don't you want them to s rebuke proud, arrogant people out there when they used to be one? Don't you want to see them do that? Amen. Don't you want to see them happy at the judgment seat of Christ, rejoicing and shouting the victory together Amen. with you? Besides, all the evil they've done to you, don't worry about that. Don't you get payment? Go to Matthew 5. Matthew chapter 5. I like Brother Daniel, Brother Sean. Oh, man, they just had so much zeal for Jesus. And I, was, I felt backslidden next to them. I was like, they're crazy, you know, when... 
somebody criticizes us for street preaching. And then all of a sudden, Daniel and Sean, they're like all excited. They're like, please, a little more. Cha-ching, cha-ching, more rewards at the judgment seat of Christ. And I, and I was like, yeah, that's good. That's good. <laughs> Post more videos against me. Turn more people against Bible believers. Go for it. You're making my piggy bank higher. Amen. And boy, you will be the most jealous person yeah. when I rule 10 cities and you got none. And then I'm going to probably come to you and shake your hand and say, so and so, and name you out there. Thank you so much for criticizing and persecuting me. I got these 10 cities to rule had it not been for you. Amen. Matthew chapter 5. Look at verse 11. Blessed are ye when men shall revile you and persecute you. Oh, I love this line. It's like God predicted what's going to happen 2,000 years later. <laughs> work back then in Jesus' day, work 2,000 years later called social media. <laughs> Look at this. And shall say all manner of evil against you falsely. What did that last three parts say? For my sake. You know, I'm doing it for Jesus' sake, not for you. So who cares what you say? I don't care what you say. Call me a pagan. Call me arrogant. Call me prideful. Call me biased, narrow-minded. I could care less. I'm doing it for Jesus' sake, and I will teach the whole truth and nothing but the truth and not shy away from it. And if I, and if I lose subscribers on the Internet or all the people in this church for preaching and teaching the truth, I don't fear. I don't get worried. But you guys do, don't you? You guys do, don't you? That's why you tone down. That's why you're changing what you used to teach back then yeah. so that you can build up your subscribers and yeah. views. I could care less. Look at verse 12. Rejoice and be exceeding glad. That's what it says, right? Here, here I get an email. Ding. Pastor Kim, I'm so angry. Can you please re rebuke this false prophet who's criticizing you? And whenever I hear that email going, ding. I could have sworn I heard my piggy bank in heaven going, ding. <laughs> And then I'm just hoping, okay, can you give 20 more, please? I'm waiting for 20 more. I'm like, ah, you know, I only get five, you know. I only got five dings, you know. I rejoice. You know why I rejoice? Because rejoice and be exceeding glad for what? Great is your reward in heaven. For so persecuted they, the prophets, which were before you. Woo, glory to God. Let them criticize San Jose Bible Baptist Church. Amen. All of us are going to get richer. Amen. 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 Remember, you know, I mean, like a couple months ago or, you know, when we were all going through suffering and we're going down and we're like, oh, you know, it's hardship. Pray for me there. And we're getting worn out. And then all of a sudden, the en we start to get enemies attacking. And then we're like, yes, yes, yes. And then the reward is greater in heaven, you know. Hey, let's stick to the fight. We remembered our fight now. You're not helping if you're attacking Bible believers. Yeah. You're not helping. You know why? Because Nero thought he was doing the job by persecuting and wiping out Christians. You know what he did? He wiped himself out and built up Christianity. That's what he did. Yeah, you know what you guys are doing? You're just building us up fine. We're doing fine. We're building up fine. Last time I saw the subscribers, it looked fine to me, you know. I still look bigger than you. I'm sorry. So, you know, we're doing pretty fine, you know. We're doing fine. We're just, you're just thriving us to become bigger. You're also making us improve us even more. You're trying to improve us more. Because when we get these attacks, then you're building us up wisdom, more tenacity, and faithfulness. Right. And you know what? We'll do a better job than before now. Amen. You guys aren't helping. And you know what? You're going to be your own undoing. You're going to wipe yourself out. Right. Just like all those people who persecuted Bible believers throughout history. You will be your own undoing. You will be the one who will be your own fall. And you'll just thrive us us up even more and even let's say let's say the our internet is gone and let's say this church is gone guess what bible believers will still thrive Be, you know why because jesus said the gates of hell shall not prevail against my church jesus christ said jesus christ has to rapture somebody before the tribulation so you know what we'll be fine we'll be fine okay you guys can go apostate that doesn't have to make me apostate by the way even if all Bible believers, and I'm the only one, let's just assume this is never going to happen, but let's just assume I'm the only one who's sticking up for Bible-believing truth. I should be the happiest man alive because I got all your cities now to rule. I got all your gold and silver. You just made me a richer man. You know why? We, we live in capitalism. That's why. So I got, so I got all your stuff. God's not going to be a communist up in heaven. Let's share the proportion equally right here. No, he's not going to do that, all right? 
Go ahead. Go ahead. You're just building up my reward up in heaven. You're just making me even more tenacious to preach and teach the truth. You know, I will admit this pastor's flesh, and there were times he felt like quitting, but when the enemy started attacking, I was like, you confirmed it. Thank you, Lord. I feel like I got to fight. Thank you. You had your chance. You could, you could have made me... You could have made me unpopular. You could have made me gone from this world. But guess what? You just thrive me even more. Thank you very much. What am I doing right now? Sarcasm? Well, verse 12, that's what I'm doing. Rejoice in me, exceeding glad. That's what I'm doing. That's what I'm thanking them. Let's, so, you know what? Concerning the enemy, surrender them to the Lord. Amen? Let God handle them. I know your life is unfair. And I know that the lost people seem to have it better than you do. That's why the song Farther Along, it, we always sing that, you know, while there are others living about us, never molested, though in the wrong, Father Along will know all about it. We sing those songs, and then we start to get jealous of the wicked people out there who are attacking and persecuting us, and they seem to get it better than us. What are you looking at? You're looking at earthly things, aren't you? You're just like those enemies, looking at earthly things. That's why they attack and persecute you, because you harm their earthly thing, see? You harm and tarnish their good reputation and name, and their comfortable lifestyle and popularity, and then their money and, its, and their power in this world, in their job, in the school, and especially the internet, see? That's why they started attacking you, because you attack their earthly thing. And when they start attack your earthly thing, you should not be jealous of that. You know why? What, are we supposed to look on this earth, or are we supposed to look up where? Up at heaven. They can grab all the world from me, but you know what? You just gave me more of heaven. <laughs> you just gave me more of heaven. And I look forward to the day when God sums, uh, sounds out his trumpet voice at the rapture, and I go up. And you enjoyed your power, your fame, your reputation. For how long till the rapture, huh? Maybe two weeks? Maybe a day? Maybe tomorrow? You had that temporary moment. See, what good was that, after all? I was just stolen from my, from my earthly blessing just for a day, see? Just for two weeks. Just for a month. Just for temporary. That's what happened to me. So why would I get jealous and mad? You just increased eternity for me. And I can't wait the, for the day when God gives me more cities to rule, more gold and silver, and an inheritance of literally what God says all things. I can't wait for that day. Church, I don't know if you made an enemy. And if you did, you better repent and get that right with God. You better repent and get that right with God and say, Lord, I was wrong to think ill, to attack a brother and sister in Christ. Especially the people online, they're just so vicious about that. That is so horrifying. And you enemies out there, if you're against KJV, dispensational, Bible-believing churches, I, I would repent if I were you. See, this sermon's for everybody, not just for your fleshy gain, your own enemy. This is for all of us. Because this pastor, if he made one, he has to repent too. I've learned what it was like to suffer bitterness, see, for years. And you know what the best lesson I've learned as a pastor was, you know, as a pastor, I remember Sean, he showed me this passage at Corinthians. The more I love them, the less I be loved. I remember he showed me that during street preaching before. I don't know if he'll remember that, but I remember that. And I, you know, when he talked to me about that, he reminded me again. I already knew that verse. I even preached a sermon on that, actually. But that verse, as pastors, pastors get, unfortunately, a lot of unfair treatment. So I want to encourage you Bible-believing pastors and missionaries out there. I know it's hard, and people mistreat you, and it's so tempting to store up bitterness. But you know what the best thing is? Let it go. Let it go. And you know what? When you let it go and leave it to God's hand, I mean, don't attack, don't criticize your fellow person in the family. What if you were like them? See, that's what you got to think about. What if you were like them? So all of you need to repent not make an enemy not criticize not attack and say lord i quickly surrender that because i don't want your judgment on me i don't want to get punished 
you, forbore, you put up with me long enough, Lord, and I fear what the terror will be at the judgment seat of Christ. I throw it down, Lord. I repent. I get right with you. Wash it in the blood of the Lamb. And if you would do that, then you know what? My prayer is answered. You know what my prayer is? Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. Every head bow and every eye shut. The altar call is open. I think some of you will want to pray and seek forgiveness from the Father. Feel free to come down here for it on the altar's floor and pray if you want, or you can pray in your seat. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Don't get fleshy and seek vengeance. Leave that up to God. Oh, God will take care of them. I know some of you are being persecuted right now. Some of you have told me what you're going through. Give that up to God. God will take care of them. And you yourself, you've got to check your own life. Have you attacked? Have you criticized somebody that's not right? You've got to repent of that too. Enemies always start somewhere in a side. You see that? Two sides have a conflict. That's how enemies are produced. There's somewhere in there that needs to be repented of and changed. My friend, if you are not saved, let me ask you a quick question. If you're to die today, are you 100%, 100% sure you can go to heaven? You might say, man, pastor, I don't know. I'm not 100% sure I can go to heaven. Guess what, friend? You can get saved right now. Jesus, he said, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. He'll give you that salvation. You might say, pastor, man, I want to get saved. I want to be forgiven. How do I go to heaven? Three easy steps. One, so you got to realize you sinned, right? Because you sinned, you're going to burn in hell after you die. So you need to realize what your sin is, and you need to say, God, I'm under conviction about my sin. I'm sorry. If you have that in your heart, then here's step number two. Step number two, God can get rid of the sin for you. That's why Jesus died, buried, and resurrected, so he can wash away your sin. So number two, all you have to do is just believe in that blood to solve your sin problem. Can you do that? You might say, yeah, pastor, I want to. Then here's number three. Here's the last part, number three. All you have to do is say that to God. That's it. All you have to do is just say to God, God, I'm only believing in the blood of Jesus to take care of my sin. And you're done. You might say, wow, that's so easy, pastor. That's right. You can do it right now. You have the opportunity and the chance to say it to God right now so you can get saved. You might say, well, pastor, I, I don't know how to say it to God. Can you please help me out? I really don't know how to say it. Sure, I'll help you out. I'll give you the words on how to say it. Uh, you don't have to say it out loud. Don't worry. Uh, every head is bowed and every eye is shut. No one knows who you are. We're not going to point out who you are, okay? So don't feel embarrassed. You don't have to say it out loud. You can just say it inside yourself, okay? I'll give you the words on how to say it. You just repeat after me, and you just do it inwardly. You don't have to say it out loud, okay? If you want to say it out loud, don't be embarrassed. No one in this church is going to look down on you for saying it out loud. Amen? Amen. We're not. We're actually going to be happy. <clears throat> Here's your opportunity to get saved. So let's do it. I'll give you the words. You can repeat after me. Dear God, I am so sorry for my sins. I believe Jesus is God who died, buried, and resurrected so his blood can wash away my sin. I only believe in the blood of Jesus to save me, not my good works. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. Amen. If you would just bow your head and close your eyes one last time, one last time, 60 seconds and we're done. I promise, 60 seconds and we're done. If you would just bow your head and close your eyes one last time. If you, if you just repeated those words, if you said, Pastor, Right now, I just repeat after you. I just told God I believe in the blood of Jesus to save me just now. Could you just slip up your hand real quickly and real briefly? I'm not going to point you out. No one knows who you are. Every head is bowed and every eye is shut. No one knows who you are. Could you just slip up your hand just real quickly and real briefly right now, please? 
All right, God bless you, God bless you, God bless you. Thank you, thank you. Okay, so let's all close with a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, I want to thank you so much that there were souls who got saved in the Lord Jesus Christ. May you get all the glory today. And thank you so much for people who repented so that we don't, the last thing we want, God, is your judgment. And all the church can agree. We repent in dust and ashes, Lord, for any evil we've done to our brother and sister in Christ. And may the enemies, our enemies out there, also repent before it's too late. God, right now we surrender every one of those enemies right now to you, God. You know who they are who criticized us and attacked your Bible-believing children. They're your children, Lord. And your word says that if, they're, if those enemies are truly saved, then we hold you to that promise that the father must chastise his children. And God, we surrender them to you. We ask that you will please chastise them, not because we seek vengeance, but that you'll chastise them quickly before they, before they get greater judgment. And I pray, God, that you'll please do whatever it takes. If whatever it takes, chastisement, blessing, mercy, or whatever it takes to get them to quickly repent and to get right with you and take back all the attacks that they said. We love you, Lord, and we surrender them to you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Out of all the wrong doctrines that's happening in our day and age at the last days of the church, as the apocalypse is coming even closer, the point of all this, friend, is that you won't be even able to grow in knowledge of the truth, in Bible-believing truth, until you get saved first. The most important question you have to ask yourself after watching all this is if you were to die today, are you 100% sure that you're going to go to heaven? Perhaps one of these wrong doctrines have affected you and you had the improper way of salvation. As you have seen before, the way to get saved is very simple. It's only simply salvation by grace alone, without works, through the Lord Jesus Christ in this Christian day and age. If you're not sure that you can go to heaven after you die, it's very simple to get saved. First of all, you have to understand that because of sin, God is a holy God, and He cannot even allow 1% of sin into heaven. So He has to judge sin with a burning hell. So it is very important that you got to realize how serious sin is, and you must repent. You might say, well then, I guess I have to clean up all my sins. I guess I have to go to church. I guess I have to get baptized. I have to, I have to be a good person. No, my friend, good works can never save you. Jesus is God who died, buried, and resurrected so that he can pay all the sins for you. You don't have to pay a single sin for yourself. So all you have to do as a repentant sinner is turn to what he did on the cross alone for your salvation. You might say, well, pastor, I do believe only on what Jesus did on the cross to save me. That's great. Then all you have to do is just say that to the Lord. You might say, well, preacher, I haven't prayed much before in my life. I don't know really how to say it to God. Can you help me out? Sure, you could say it this way. Dear God, I know I'm a sinner. As I repent, I put my faith that Jesus is God and that he died, buried and resurrected so that his blood can wash away my sins. I put my faith in that alone to save me, not my good works. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. Congratulations, my friend, if you meant it with all your heart that you put your faith only on what Jesus did on the cross through his blood to save you, then you are saved. It's that simple, my friend. Now, my friend, it is important to grow in Bible-believing truth. You now know the truth. What are you going to do about it? As the apocalypse comes even more closer and Satan's about his, to set up his kingdom even more, there are many souls dying and going to hell, and even many more churches out there who don't know right and wrong doctrine. It is up to you now on what to do. And go to our resources site, www.bbcenglish.org, and click on the resources link over there, and it'll give you everything that you need to grow in grace. The next step of your journey now is up to you. We've done our part giving you this movie. All of it was done for free by the love of the people. God bless you.